<laughs> so today I'm taking a little bit of a break from Flipper Zero content to talk about the NVIDIA 340 drivers uh, and installing them on Linux in 2022. What this means for those of us who maintain older hardware uh, and, you know, I guess I want to address the age-old question of should we be using these proprietary drivers or should we be using Nouveau, the open source, uh, amazing reverse engineered drivers. Now, this is kind of becoming a, an even more important issue because soon 390 drivers will be depreciated as well. So we're going to have a whole new crew coming in to the depreciated driver party. Uh, and there's a lot of questions to ask, a lot of things to think about uh, and contemplate about what you choose to do with your system. For those who are not familiar, the 340 drivers are a set of depreciated, legacy, proprietary drivers from NVIDIA. Uh, and they target the G8 through, I think, the 200 series of NVIDIA GPU. These are really old. Old GPU is not good for uh, modern builds, but if you have a desktop lying around that has motherboard graphics, they're a great upgrade. You can find one for free, scrounge one around if you have one lying around in an old closet. Uh, if you have an older desktop that maybe was more high-end computer at the time uh, that doesn't have an integrated graphics setup, right? These oftentimes predate the iGPU paradigm. Uh, you might just be on your own. You might have one video out and that's going to be your NVIDIA graphics card you already have in there. Uh, the other use cases, laptops. And I think that this is probably one of the most important use cases because unlike the other situations, there is no way out. It's a laptop. And these laptops are still oftentimes pretty good. Uh, these are like mid to late 2000 laptops that uh, sometimes have like core duos. In fact, one of the most popular and iconic laptops of this era, the uh, MacBook and MacBook Pro series, both use NVIDIA GPUs, is, is before the, the great falling out between NVIDIA and Mac. Unfortunately, in 2020, however, NVIDIA depreciated these drivers. So that means that uh, we were not getting uh, feature updates for probably the last like 10 years or something. It's been a while. Uh, but we're now we're no longer getting security updates. I want to really quickly address this uh, because I think that as home users, we oftentimes get lost in the notions of privacy or security. Uh, but from what I've been able to find, the only CVEs out for the NVIDIA 340 drivers are actually specifically pertaining to Windows. Uh, so that is something to think about. The other issue is, or the other thing involved there is that it is a local privilege escalation, right? Uh, this is not a remote access issue. Uh, and, you know, I think that this comes up a lot in, in, in terms of like Linux and privacy conversations. If somebody is enacting a local uh, privilege escalation on your device, that means they are in your house, on your computer, intentionally trying to hack you and they have the skills to do this this is not just like any dumb dick is going to walk in your house and uh just accidentally find privilege escalation this is a very serious thing uh and there's like 10 things in the list of issues well before they're hacking your computer like they're in your house why are they in your house they shouldn't be in your house you have a lot of problems to deal with so I'm not a security expert. I just like it a lot. I'm not trying to tell you what you should or shouldn't do with your computer. You need to make your own choices and your own safety concerns. But the reality is that as a home user, it's very unlikely that the uh, security vulnerabilities in the 340 drivers are uh, the, or is the available and openly available uh, exploits are going to affect you as a personal user. Again, there's tons of stuff that might come up later, and there's plenty of reasons why you might want to install the 340 drivers and then just completely disconnect this box from your network, or maybe not use it on the internet, just use it for old games. However you choose to use these drivers, it's up to you. Just want to put that out there. But because of this depreciation, this also means that uh, the drivers are no longer supported by the kernel. Uh, and they're no longer supported by Xorg's X server package. These are proprietary drivers, and once they're gone, uh, nobody can keep them up uh, except for NVIDIA, keep them up to date. So the only thing we can do is patch them to work with modern kernels. And yes, it is possible. Uh, so we're going to go through a few distributions, show you where to get them. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about 
Nouveau, because I think that Nouveau gets a little bit of a bad rep. Uh, I, I want to be clear that I think Nouveau is so cool. I think Nouveau is super cool, in fact. Reverse engineering is the foundation of computing as we know it, right? Without reverse engineering, we don't get the IBM clone, right? We don't get to this place in personal computing. Reverse engineering is a really cool, like, middle finger to proprietary hardware drivers, uh, proprietary anything. It's a big middle finger, and I love it. But there are issues with it, right? Reverse engineering... Uh, is a complex process. And without actually having access to the information that the developers need, Nouveau can just never have feature parity, right? Can also have aggressively new features in comparison to some of these old depreciated drivers. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but I just wanna be clear that I think Nouveau is a really cool project. Uh, it's a really rad project, but of course it has its pitfalls. Uh, so we're gonna have to do a little cost benefit analysis here uh, in a second. To, to figure out why we should or shouldn't use these for our hardware. First, let's get us settled, settled though. Let's say you wanna get the 340 drivers. I mean, Nouveau is easy to get out of the box. The 340 drivers, however, are gonna be a struggle in 2022. Uh, so the first distribution I wanna talk about is Ubuntu. It's one of the most used and one of the most supported distributions. Uh, and they have what is called PPAs, which are like third-party repositories that are very easy to add to your system. People have issues with the idea of third-party repositories. I understand those issues. Uh, but especially when it comes to these drivers, these depreciated legacy drivers, I don't think you're going to have quite the same issues that you would have if you're trying to bring in brand new software that might require new libraries. If anything, uh, your system might eventually have libraries that are not backwards compatible with these 340 drivers. So it might be the inverse more so than anything, which can be a problem. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So the PPA for uh, these drivers is NVIDIA Legacy Butterfly. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, and this is really great because not only do PPAs work on Ubuntu, they work on Lubuntu, Zubuntu, Kubuntu, Budgie, all, all the, um, in the official Ubuntu spins, as well as uh, distros derived from Ubuntu, right? So Mint, I think, is really the big one that people are all about. I think Elementary might use PPAs. I'm not a positive about that. I know you can use PPAs in Pop, Pop OS, but I'm not sure what kind of compatibility you're going to have when you're going that far back in hardware. I don't know if I've ever... I don't think I've gotten Pop to boot on a non-EFI, UEFI system. So I'm actually not sure it's compatible with BIOS. I don't know. Uh, but you can get this going on a lot of distributions. It covers a wide range of bases. The, it's usually pretty good. You're usually gonna have pretty up-to-date coverage in terms of like the kernel release rate is really slow on Ubuntu in comparison to other distributions. And I think most of the work is actually being done upstream in Debian. So they're really kind of just, I think, porting over the work done in Debian and giving it to, to all the different Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based users. The one thing to remember is that when you are running uh, a PPA, PPAs are disabled on version upgrade. So if you're going from 2004 to 2204 or 2110 to 2204, uh, you might run into some problems because your PPAs will be disabled and now we're getting a system critical driver from our PPAs, right? Or, or you know, our GUI will be gone uh, if we make an upgrade because we're not getting the latest package in. So you're gonna have to do one of two things. Either you're gonna have to boot back in with an older kernel uh, and try to address this through the GUI by going to like software, I think, and like uh, not not the software, there's like two different software, three different software programs in Ubuntu, right? There's like the software, which is this, the, the GNOME store, then there's software updater, and then there's the software segment where you can mess with your drivers and your PPAs. You can do that. Uh, and then do another update and upgrade, or you can just drop into a TTY after you reboot, because you're probably going to get forced into one anyways, and you can uh, manually go back into your source.list file uh, or your source.d or source.list.d folder and address whatever PPAs you need to address, uh, re-enable them, update, upgrade, you should be good to go. The next distribution I looked at was... Arch, because Arch has the AUR, and of course, there is a 340 uh, driver setup in available there. Uh, I did not try this out on a vanilla Arch install for ease of installation on a multi-boot disk that I had working, I was working with at the time, uh, but 
I did get it working with Manjaro, which is actually good news because I'm sure it's much easier to get it uh, working with a natural vanilla Arch, uh, but it will work again on Arch derivatives, the same way the PPA works on Ubuntu derivatives. So uh, this again, addressed a nice wide audience of uh, Linux users. So I'm gonna leave a link down below to a forum post that I needed to use to get a little bit of help. I had to do a couple tweaks on that one uh, because one of the files wasn't automatically moving uh, due to permissions. I had to manually put uh, a, a, a file in my, in my Xorg uh, X11 uh, or my, my X11 Xorg.conf.d folder. Uh, so that was a, its own little mess, but uh, you should be able to figure it out. If you're using Arch, you should be able to figure it out. If you can't, you should probably stick with Ubuntu. Ubuntu is really by far the easiest way. If you're working with an older system, I really recommend Ubuntu. LXQt is awesome, super flexible, and I've made some other videos about that as well. So take a peek uh, at those if you're looking to expand uh, your repertoire there and maybe change your window manager out, try something different, try something exciting. The next distribution I want to talk about is Debian, because Debian is a little bit different than the other two. Uh, unlike Arch and unlike Ubuntu, there's actually a 340 driver still available deep within uh, Debian, uh, Debian 11 even, right? It is in the unstable repositories, and this kind of means we got to do a little something weird. We either need to, one, run in unstable. I mean, for people who run in unstable, it's really not that big a deal, especially if it's not your primary system, because you're not really going to have, uh, I don't know, I haven't run into the big game breaking issues. What I have run into is issues like uh, I wanted to install Steam uh, maybe a week or two ago, and I went to install Steam, and it turns out that the i386 Mesa uh, library that I needed wasn't matching up with the uh, AMD64 library I already had. And in order to have both libraries, they have to be at the exact same version. This doesn't usually happen in other distributions because they're not usually just throwing things out all willy-nilly, but in Unstable, they don't care, right? They're just throwing out the latest version as soon as it comes. So you might have to wait a, a few days. I think it took like maybe four to even five days for that next uh, Mesa library to, uh, i386 Mesa library to drop that matched, and then I was able to install Steam. So you will find some peculiarities. Uh, supposedly you can make some game breaking changes, uh, and that, that could be a problem. So maybe you don't want to do this if you want to stay super stable. Uh, but the other option, unfortunately, is to create a Franken Debian, which is like one of the most uh, hated concepts in the Debian world, right? Uh, they hate when you do a Franken Debian, but sometimes it's pretty useful. And in this particular case, I think that, again, the same way I was saying that I suspect Ubuntu will break the 340 drivers before the 340 drivers break Ubuntu using a PPA. I think the same is kind of the case here, right? Uh, we're talking about legacy depreciated drivers. These are not changing at all, aside from patches to make them work with modern kernels. Uh, so you have you don't have the same concerns, and if you're only installing the 340 drivers, then you can go ahead and create a Franken Debian, I think. Again, your mileage may vary. Uh, to do this, I don't think you can do it with stable. I think you have to do it with testing because I think you need a newer kernel than is available in stable for this to work properly, or at least I have found that updating the kernel uh, went or fixed some problems I was having at a certain point. Uh, but you can add a uh, basically unstable as like a pinned repository. So you can add unstable as a separate repository and then pin it back so that you're only installing stuff from there that you choose to install and you're not getting you're not updating your whole system to unstable uh and you know testing is a little bit more stable it's actually probably a lot more stable because testing is still i think they're still putting out like you know matching libraries and stuff you're probably gonna have a much better experience there but when debian is talking about stable they're talking about like ultimate server stable and we're talking about desktop stable so it's a little bit different it's okay if you have to reboot your system every once in a while you probably should uh you're not looking for 300 days 365 day long uh no reboot phases because you will need to reboot to change things like kernels and stuff right a lot of those that's what the thing they don't talk about it like these distributions that that stay up for years at a time uh you know a lot of those might even be using 
three or four kernels probably four at this point because three is pretty old but they're using very very old kernels and you can do live updates and stuff whatever i'm getting i'm getting off topic here uh but yeah so the 340 drivers are available in unstable uh and there's a couple ways you can get them but once you get them you're off to the races once you once you get those, those the distribution set up you're off to the races so we're gonna go over here uh, we're going to go to NVIDIA Butterfly, right? So uh, NVIDIA Legacy Butterfly is what we want. Uh, we're going to launch pad. Sometimes, I don't know why, my things have been a little uh, finicky lately. There are some descriptions for some uh, solutions to different issues. I have had to do this where I have had to change where my module path was a couple times on, on on mostly on debian not really on ubuntu uh but the it's very easy to add this is this is the instruction set for adding the repository to your to your system uh, and then you should be able to just uh, i think you just look up nvidia graphic drivers or uh, nvidia legacy drivers uh either way you, you should be able to, to just search nvidia and 340 something will come up for you uh in apt so take a shot on that uh, we're going to, over an AUR, again, very easy. Uh, there is the Git for you. Uh, and, you know, you should be able to do all this. Oh, they're patched all the way up to the 518 kernel. Yeah. Oh, that's one thing as well. Uh, Debian and Arch run way faster on kernels, right? Their, their cadence for releases is way faster. Uh, so be careful. Do not try to jump from 518 uh, to 519 until the patches have dropped here. Uh, same with Debian. Make sure you see that there is a change to the NVIDIA 340 drivers and that they have the new patches for 319 or 519 or 518 or whatever the newest kernel is at the time uh, before you go upgrading. They actually recommend you pin your kernel back. Uh, I think on, on 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 this repository, if I if I remember correctly, uh, somebody was saying, make sure you, you pin your repository because there's just not enough people power to be able to, uh, to, to keep, keep up to date, you know, with the, the latest and greatest. So that can be an issue, just something to keep in mind. Uh, now I want to drop a uh, one or two really quick troubleshooting issues. I want to do an entire video about trying to get your Mac device working properly with this because there there is a ton more to it uh but one of the main issues that i ran into and in hardware wise uh was that i was running uh integrated motherboard graphics in one of my systems and as a result uh linux just really did not want to view my uh pci graphics card as the primary device so what i had to do was one of two things uh one, as I had to blacklist, right? So, you know, we, uh, to blacklist something, you're going to go to uh, slash etc slash modprobe.d, uh, and we're going to add a blacklist file there uh, with a descriptive name, blacklist, usually it's blacklist dash something dot conf. Uh, and we're going to say blacklist space and the driver we want to get rid of. Uh, for me, those drivers were the AMD GPU driver and the Radeon driver. Usually, for, in some cases, only I needed I only needed to get rid of the Radeon driver. Uh, in the last case on Debian, I, I might have done something weird, but I had to also blacklist the AMD GPU driver because both of them just kept trying to to um, enable themselves against my will. Uh, and I did feel like I was having some issues with some. Um, lack of continuity. I, I thought like I was uh, not able to utilize the appropriate amount of RAM on the my NVIDIA card when I had the uh, motherboard graphics enabled. Uh, these motherboard graphics have access to 64 megabytes of, of RAM. I think it's actually system RAM on top to, to boot. So that, that was just no good. I had to blacklist. I also um, had to, let's see, I had to add the bus ID option. And let's Let's see, there is like some weird formatting here uh, that I had to personally use, but let's see if I can quick find it because I don't have that computer up right now. Uh, yeah, it's this one right here. So you need bus ID and then you need to put the PCI slot. I don't think that this is actually the appropriate uh if there are many gpus installed it used to, uh, whatever uh, i had to use like a way weirder uh like this this pci did not work uh i had i had to do a way weirder uh oh. 
format for that. And I'm not exactly sure. I can't remember exactly what I did there. Uh, but I it, it was formatted a little bit differently. It was in a little bit of a, a goofier formatting. Uh, so keep that in mind that you might... It, it, it might not be exactly what you think it is. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just was doing it wrong, but... Maybe that PCI one will work for you, but I I had to put it in as a slightly different, uh, so you know, yeah yeah it was the at one so it was like PCI, uh one at yeah 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 so it was like this PCI one let's 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 go down here so everyone can see uh here we go yeah PCI and I think it was one at. Uh, zero zero zero. So that was like if I actually had to do it three, right? It, this is this depends on uh, what slot you're in. I think you have to use LSPCI to find what slot you're in. Uh, but uh, for me, it, it was like slot three. It could be slot one or slot two for you. It all depends on where you put that that card. Uh, and also, I think it might be different if it's a PCI versus PCIe card. I don't know, but I needed to use the bus ID option in my xorg.com. That's basically the long and the short of it. Uh, and that was able to get me to a desktop. And then from there, I was able to realize I wanted to blacklist the Radeon drivers on the integrated chipset that was in my system. Uh, again, like motherboard graphics are awful. They only have 64 megabytes of memory. Usually, I think maybe at most you might get 128 megabytes of memory. Uh, but oftentimes they're drawing from your system RAM, and I think, don't quote me on that, or, and I, they're also just like, I, most of them are depreciated. At this point, like, uh, I think it was, it was like a R R200 uh, integrated motherboard graphics, and I think the R100 and 200 chipsets are like so far depreciated, not even the Radeon drivers can handle them anymore. You're not getting any desktop acceleration with those. Uh, but yeah, it was just with two really quick changes, uh, I was able to get myself into a Debian desktop. Uh, as a side note, I didn't have to do any of that, uh, or I didn't have to, to do the bus ID option to make uh, uh, the, the Arch setup work. Uh, it actually worked pretty well out of the box, I, with the exception I think I did, I did have to blacklist the Radeon drivers because they were, they were, not, uh, they were not playing hand in hand very well. Uh, now again, you know, there's there there will be some sort of troubleshooting issues for your system. They're always going to be different because every like hardware setup requires something slightly different, and it, it can be really uh, frustrating. I, I've also had an issue where that my my uh, GLX drivers weren't matching properly or weren't linking properly, and I've had to like re relink my GLX driver. So. If you're running into an issue where SDDM is just a blank screen when you try to log in, uh, it's it's probably because your GLX is not properly linked and you're gonna have to go through and solve that. Uh, so just a couple of hints, tips, places to go think about, uh, and you know some stuff to, to ponder. Now here's where I really wanna get down to the nitty gritty about whether or not Nouveau or NVIDIA's proprietary drivers are the better solution. Because for I'll admit that uh, kind of once I got the 340 drivers on, I was pretty much like, oh, this is so much better. It, it can't get any better than this. And there, you know, I, th there's no possible reason anyone would want to use Nouveau. This is insane. Because I've been using Nouveau for a short period of time before I got all of this working and set up properly. But... Of course, with each passing day, I keep finding new nuances that just make me want to rip my hair out. So uh, I guess I kind of want to do some pros, uh, some pros first, and then we'll do some cons. So the pros uh, of the 340 driver, we'll start there. Uh, now, I think people have had different experiences installing proprietary drivers on their devices. What I personally found uh, was that installing the 340 drivers dropped my idle GPU temperatures on at least one device by about 10 degrees. This is not a guarantee across the board, but Nouveau does have power setting issues. And uh, sometimes that can look like underpowering your GPU, you're not getting enough performance, sometimes it's overpowering. And that means drawing on your battery too hard, uh, or that, and that 
also means you know drawing extra power supplies too hard and increased thermals so maybe you have a desktop it's not that big a deal you have plenty of airflow but it's especially on a laptop, this is a huge difference, a huge deal breaker. Uh, you, 10 degrees on your GPU on the laptop is the difference between uh, running something in like the 80s and 90s and running something in the 70s. Uh, there's not really, uh, the, you really shouldn't be pushing your GPU up into the 80 degree temperature zone. 70 is kind of the max I want to be at and in the 60s would be ideal. So there's that. Uh, the 340 drivers do have uh, a bunch of different features available. This is one of the things that kind of bums me out about Nouveau, uh, but there is a lot more access to stuff like uh, monitoring tools, right? Uh, you have access to NVIDIA SMI uh, or, or, you know, so you, you have access in like the NVIDIA X server settings uh for where you can like check out let's let's pull something up real fast we're going to pull up nvidia x server settings right so this right i can see my gpu utilization right now i can see my video engine utilization uh i can i can see what's happening and i can see whether i'm getting what i want whether i'm doing what i want uh, right, like right now, I'm on my 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 uh, 1050 uh, PC. This is the best GPU I have in my house. Not not great, uh, but I have like a 210 or a uh, GT218, and I also have a MacBook that has like a G8600 chip in it. Uh, and, and so those ones are, you know, they're they're definitely in a very different world. Uh, but at least I can tell what's happening. I can see that they are or are not using as much me memory. Uh, you know. VRAM as I expect them to. I can see if the video engine is being utilized the way I expect it to, or if GPU utilization is right. I have different stuff that Nouveau doesn't really offer. I haven't been able to find out uh, how to how to get to that information uh, easily or at all, really. Uh, there's thermal settings, right? I can change fan speeds. I mean, you know, uh, I, I don't have that option on either of the computers that I have a, a, G, uh, a 340 driver capable uh, chip. But if you do, you might be able to control your fan speeds better uh, using this, right? And uh, now the power miser is not going to work. You're actually going to overclock through a different mechanism, but you can overclock using 340 drivers. You cannot overclock through Nouveau. I don't think you can overclock mobile chips the same way. So it doesn't work on my on my laptop. But uh, you can you can do some overclocking. It's gonna it's a little bit different. You don't use the same cool bits number, uh, and it will actually just add a whole extra frequency section in there. But uh, yeah, so that is. Those are some of the perks uh, off the top of my head that I can think of about using the 340 drivers. They're also just like meant to, to be worked with the card. So there's probably internal things that I don't quite understand, uh, but you will have access to all of your codecs out of the box. You will have access to uh, basically all the features that your card is supposed to have. And that's kind of where we start running into problems, right? These are depreciated drivers. The 340 drivers have not been updated themselves for feature content for years, years and years and years. Uh, and that puts us in a little bit of a problem, a bind, because not all features are inherently baked into the card, right? Some features are just GPU driver features. And I believe that one of those is DRI3. So we're going to, let's get on to why, why, why Nouveau can be beneficial, right? So DRI3, uh, direct rendering infrastructure. So this is, this is what, uh, one of the ways that, that the, the, the graphic stack works. Uh, and DRI2 was the standard at the time of 340 drivers, and we had never got to DRI3 because by the time the DRI3 came out, these were already depreciated into a legacy space. Uh, so we never got DRI3 capabilities. Now, my understanding is that these cards should do G DRI3. They just don't have it in the drivers. However, funny enough, Nouveau hasn't implemented DRI3. So I, as far as I know, I have not checked it out 
personally, but I think that if you're running Nouveau, you should be able to access DRI3, which does, I think, allow you to uh, hardware accelerate more and better. If I stopped running everything on this system, this computer, even using i3, is still going to be accelerating or using a lot more of its like video RAM than any of the other computers that I have NVIDIA cards on because they're all running 340 drivers. And my theory is because that's DRI3 and DRI3 is not being used to uh, accelerate some of the things that it could be used to accelerate if I had it. That's an issue, right? Uh, it's an issue that may seem like it's not a big deal at first, uh, but the more I keep getting into things, the more I'm like, wow, I think that this could be doing more for just my basic desktop, possibly if I had Nouveau installed. I don't know. Uh, but that's definitely not the only feature set, I think, that's like that. It's just the first one that comes to my head and the first one, the only one I can think of right now. Uh, but there, there are features that Nouveau can implement into its drivers that you're never going to get through 340 um, because it's done. It's appreciated, it's proprietary, we can't do anything with that. Nouveau is also very portable, right? Nouveau can be put onto just about any NVIDIA GPU and it will run. You might have to use no mode setting and if you're doing that, that might be a reason to try the 340 drivers out. No mode setting is not a great position to be in uh, and, and you're probably, it's gonna affect your performance of your card, uh, but it's definitely not the, you know, the worst thing, it's just not a great space to be in. You know, I think people have different experiences using different hardware, uh, but I have heard some people say that the proprietary drivers run hotter on their system and that the Nouveau drivers run cooler on their system. So that's another thing to think about. Nouveau uses the VA API uh, for its video acceleration. This is the same API that Intel uses to accelerate its cards. Uh, or it's it's like iGPUs, I guess, technically. Uh, AMD uses both uh, I, uh, or VA API, as well as NVIDIA's uh, VDPAU, and then NVIDIA cards, their drivers only use VDPAU. There's nothing wrong with VDPAU, except Linux does not particularly love it. Uh, most web browsers, uh, Linux is a little bit funky when it comes to web browsers and video acceleration, hardware acceleration in general. But uh, for the most part, they're missing a lot of the feature sets that th things like Windows have available to them. Uh, there's no encoding as far as far as I understand in the realm of Linux, uh, whereas I think Windows does have encoding. Maybe Mac has encoding as well. Uh, and there's also an issue uh, with with decoding video. Now, it works a lot better uh, under VA API, but it needs to be patched. Uh, not all distributions include that patch, and I think uh, the same goes with uh, VDAPU. That is a, well, actually, I'm not sure if you need a patch for the VA API, so you need to at least like, reconfigure some stuff, but I know you need a patch for VDAPAU, and most distributions are not putting that out there. Uh, not all, so like they, like your distribution has to do a build of Chromium that will allow you to actually do the video acceleration that you want. Brave seems to have this built in by default and I've had uh, Brave has become just my de facto. Firefox does not have anything to do with VDPAU. They do not have support for VDPAU. Uh, and I don't think they plan on implementing it anytime soon, which is, uh, a bummer and kind of stupid in my opinion you know firefox wants to know why it's no longer the the crown of of the secondary you know the anti ie or internet explorer campaign and that's one of the reasons i mean i stopped using firefox because it wasn't giving me the, the hardware acceleration i wanted but again uh, I'm, I'm rambling a little bit uh, the reality is that the va api is better supported and so because nouveau uses va api that can be an advantage. It's just it's just important to recognize that uh, there are some some differences in these drivers, and that I don't think one or the other is the right choice. It's really about what works best for your hardware, uh, and I really do recommend taking a second to experiment, tweak, try try each one, and see if you can figure out what's going on. 
again, the, 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 it's, it, it is kind of hard because with Nouveau, you can't always see what's happening. You're not able to necessarily see these kinds of very clear and concise uh, metrics. You can usually kind of tell by the way the system is functioning. Also, probably try watching your videos in VLC. Anyways, it's really easy. Control N and then paste in the URL of your favorite YouTube video. Hit enter. And I'm sorry, other creators, sorry, creators in general, monetized creators. Uh, but you can watch an entire YouTube video at max uh, 720p and have a uh, smooth, fluid, uh, great experience. I find it works best on Debian. I don't always have great success with all the other distributions. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just a little bit today about the 340 drivers, uh, how you can get them, and I guess why why you would want to use them over Nouveau or why, why you want to use Nouveau over uh, over these proprietary drivers that are kind of aging and, and decrepit over Nouveau that's starting to kind of get, get some pushes forward. And as far as I understand, uh, NVIDIA has actually even gone as far as helping a little bit uh, with with uh, Nouveau in, in the last few years and the push towards open sourcing their newer stuff might mean that they might give Nouveau even more information to help them uh, develop the Nouveau drivers better for older GPUs. This is kind of the limit uh, usually any the car any cards before 340 are not really going to have my, many modern features that still work uh, that they're not going to be H.264 compliant. They're not they're not going to have this codex. Uh, they're probably just not going to be better than an iGPU at a certain point uh, or or some, or any kind of, you know, even the motherboard graphics. Honestly, at, at a certain point, you're going to be like, eh. Uh, so, yeah, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Make your choices. I just wanted to make this video because I keep trying to make one about this topic and I just kept running into more and more new information every single time. It's been frustrating. Also, you might find I didn't talk about uh, Fedora. Why didn't I talk about Fedora? Because nobody's, nobody's keeping it up to date with Fedora. Uh, I wasn't able to find a copper. I wasn't able to find anything uh, that, would, that would lead me to believe that there's a 340 driver that works with modern kernels. Uh, in in Fedora or around Fedora or behind or in front of Fedora, <laughs> there's just, I just couldn't find anything. And again, there's reasonable security concerns for that, but uh, you know, you make your choices. But uh, thanks so much for hanging out, and I hope that you learned uh, something or nothing. But uh, see you next time on Rod Linux.